pleasure speaking with you around this time. Well, no, I wouldn't even say this time of the year. Every moment we get a chance to talk throughout the year. And one of the biggest reasons why is because there's always something special that's happening. And what we're going to talk about kind of has to do a little bit with my my zombie shirt. Yeah. Um, Has to do with um, a very famous castle that's all red. And... um, buddy over here who's hanging out with me what is going on with casa loma at this time of the year rudy we should have you uh, as part of our set deck team because <laughs> it all mapped out beautifully you know legends of horror is special for all of us at the castle because it's just the it's the most fun you can have as we've said before there's nothing better than a haunted castle at Halloween. And uh, as the summer slowly sort of works its way out and the, the leaves start to go fall, we've got that change coming. And we're so, so, so excited for all of the changes that we have this year at Legends of Horror. I want to walk you through it because, you know, we're always trying to tweak and do something different and something new. And over the years, we've added animatronics and, uh, you know, uh, live actors and all of that kind of stuff. But we're always refining, refining, refining. Uh, this year, we're working with a lot of themes, um, and we've got some some new fun stuff. So, um, again, it's for those who are, aren't familiar with Legends of Horror. It's an experience of, of with the theater in promenade, meaning you're you're walking essentially over a kilometer and a half, um, and experiencing thrills and chills in front of you, beside you, behind you, above you, and who's to say maybe even below you. We when you come in through the gardens. Uh, down at the Davenport gates. First thing you're going to be met with this year, of course, is a horrifying spectacle as always, but we also have some contortionists this year and they're going to be there. Yeah, they're absolutely, it's just gruesome how they can move, but it's spectacular to watch. It just doesn't seem like it's real, but they're real. Um, You come through that, you'll walk through, there's, we've got our jump scares, our actors are all on point this year, better and better than every year, than, than the years before. We've got lots of new costumes, amazing masks. Go up through our vampire graveyard, um, through our werewolf territory, which is so much fun, all kinds of lasers, into um, our swamp creature land, which really is like very reminiscent of Crystal Lake thinking Jason and Friday the 13th. There's a lot of movie themes this year. Up through what we have this year, a haunted harvest corn maze into the underworld. And the underworld is a really different space, much more like a hellhole full of demons. You're going to get you up the stairs to the Captain Morgan Pavilion, where, of course, you're going to need that shot of courage and a little bit of break, a little bit of a scary break before you step out into the hellhole. The hellhole is the gardens, but it's full of fire breathing goblins. And they're going, yes, it's just going to be spectacular. They're going to definitely get you on your way very quickly uh, because you're going to be so scared that uh, you're going to run to the haunted house. And when you get there, you're going to realize immediately the mistake that you've made. Thematically, we've got several amazing horror themes going on in there. Uh, we've got a circus freak show, lots of lots of wicked clowns, vampires, wandering through basically a ghostly hotel with a, a de- through a devastated ballroom with the, with the twins from The Shining. So lots of nods to The Shining. Shelley Duval just passed recently. So we have mm-hmm. to give a nod to that. The horror movie of all horror movies, really, when you think about it. But there's all kinds of themes from The Last of Us and, um, and, and Stranger Things. And there's lots of nods to the upside down. And so it just, that's just gonna be so much fun in the Haunted Mansion that'll move you through into the tunnels which oh my goodness with their phantom themes our plague um we've got uh, we've got the the plague portion of the tunnel there's so many themes in there it's just going to feel like you've descended into the pits of hell um and into sort of really like the the real nest of the vampire deeper darker scarier tunnels ending in a really newly imagined frankenstein fabulous finale so that's that's the walk and after an hour and a half of that, honestly, you'll be you'll be wanting to change your clothes, have more things, and then go in for a second round. There you go. Now we should let people know that there's technically two different um, events that go on: one for kids, 
and the one for older folks. Can you explain that? Yeah, so we have, so what we've done over the years is we've, we've uh, later, like closer to Halloween, we've added uh, what I call Legends, Legends Light. We've just mm -hmm. opened up Legends of Horror a couple of hours earlier when it's still, I mean, the, the sun is setting fairly quickly these days, but it's still not full dark outside. And we, we don't put in the, the actors and we allow families to go through with kids so that they can have an experience of Legends of Horror, but they don't have the same level of scare because they're not getting any jump scares. Um, and because they have enough vision to see that animatronics are animatronics and and so that it's it's explainable to the kids what they're seeing. It's more enjoyable as opposed to, as a, I mean, it's certainly thrilling, but it's not yeah. absolutely terrifying because we don't actually want to do that to kids. So we find we get, mind you, younger and younger and younger kids are tougher and tougher and tougher yes. at Legends of Horror over the years. And I think that's just um, probably related to gaming and technology and their facility with technology and their their innate understanding of technology where in a, in a different sense, us adults who are a little bit older are still dazzled by technology, but <laughs> for these kids, it's it, they have an affinity for it. So we are finding that younger and younger populations uh, can tolerate it, but the, the Legends of Horror Family Hour kind of runs from five to seven. Uh, I'm just going to, it, it's not, um, it doesn't start, I think, until October 18th uh, is Family Hour, so I just want to make that clear. October 18th to the no, to November 2nd, we have the, the Family Hours, and that would be from 5 to 6.30 p.m., where younger kids could come through without, um, but we're going to terrify the pants off of everybody else, just so <laughs> From seven o'clock on, the jump scares are second to none. They're better and better every year. But a note for those who are somewhat faint of heart, it you can you can let us know if you're somebody who is a little bit more vulnerable to a jump scare. And so if you are, we can give you a tag that is lit so that uh, when you're going by, the actors would know not to jump scare you um, and and sort of focus their sights on other other braver souls. And at the same time, we never, the actors will never touch you, never grab you. Um, nobody will ever be hurt, of course. And for the same token, we always ask audiences, please don't touch the actors because that can actually be, gets it, it jolts them out of character and can be quite sort of daunting for them as well. So even though you're on a stage, you're in a stage and it's a theater spectacle, it's a look but don't touch experience. And, uh, and in doing so, everybody will have a, a better time. The other thing, too, you kind of um, I don't want to just say glanced over, but um, you talked about the Captain Morgan's. Uh, do I call it what do I call it? Uh, to me, I call it uh, Captain Morgan's hell. And the reason why I call it that is because literally with with the drinks and everything else going on, there is a lot that happens inside that area. Can you talk about that, please? Because you cannot glance over that. You don't think I can gloss over the pavilion side, no. which is a really the portal to our hell hole, which is the gardens. We have, I mean, we have an LED screen that, that spans the length of the bar that's just got fantastic, crisp, horrifying images just to keep you in the mood. Uh, we have our, our fabulous animatronic fire breathing dragon and um, and she's quite amazing and horrifying and terrifying. Great selfie opportunity, Captain Morgan's Bar. We've got amazing themed drinks. It's sort of the perfect stop off place. And when I say yes, you go there for a shot of courage. You need to have a little bit of courage to step in there. And so it's a fabulous place. People spend quite a bit of time in there. There's lots happening in there. There's food of course as well around the castle. So there's lots to do. Um, and and uh, and it's certainly it's an experience to be in there. It's really great. Like the 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 3D animations, the 3D projections, of the animatronics, the technology, the sound that goes into what makes Legends of Horror is really something that makes it kind of second second to none as an experience in the city. Like we just sort of pull out all. I mean, the the castle itself is a perfect backdrop. I mean, we have the castle burning down on yeah. a 3D animation. It just looks incredible with, with ghosts and ghoulies and demons flying all around. And it's just so realistic. That's sort of hyper-realistic because a 3D animation on a castle that's you know, 50, 60, 70 feet high is just something that nobody else is gonna experience. It's amazing. Um, and it's so much fun for us to see people enjoying it and going through it. This screaming and 
it's just really next level for us. And you go, you know, all the way from the top of the castle right down into the pit of the tunnels and the um, the technology and the innovation that goes into putting all of that together. It's really exceptional. I mean, Nadia DiDonato is a creative mind behind all of this. And she's got all sorts of fabulously twisted ideas of how to bring all of these themes that, that, that horror themes that people love to life in the castle in a real tangible way and really turn the castle into a completely different place. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a visionary gift and we're so lucky to be able to execute it every year. Now, um, we've had crazy weather during the summer. I'm going to say that we're going to have the same thing probably uh, leading right up to Halloween. Meaning, of course, rain. I've gone to this. Uh, uh, I've gone to this event in the rain, and I've had a blast because it just made it more scarier. What is going to happen with weather? Will it keep going like I've experienced? Because when I went, I loved it when it rained. Yeah, well, we're a rain or shine event. Nothing daunts us, as you know. Our we're well equipped to deal with most weather. But for legends in particular, weather is a bonus. So, yeah. you know, that, that's where you get like a sensory because there's so much of what happens during Legends of Horror that can be uh, described as kind of sensory deprivation experiences because you're in the dark or you're feeling things over your shoulder. So if it just so happens that the tunnels are under a foot of water because we've got another monsoon, it's like bring your wellies because you're going in. <laughs> and who knows what's lurking under that water. I mean, I swear, if we could get eels in there, we would do it. <laughs> I'm not going to put eels in the water, but wouldn't that be great? Um, yeah, we just deal with the elements as it happens. And honestly, for Legends, it's just an add-on. When you think about any any horror movie, the ele uh, horror movie, the elements always just add a layer of the shining. It was cold. And then, you know, with uh, obviously with um, Jason and Friday the 13th, there's Crystal Lake. There's always those themes uh, or those the, the fact that the environment around you has such a role to play. And the castles and, and and Toronto weather is a real perfect backdrop for a horror, horror experience at the castle, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty. When does it start? What days does it run? Because I'm always the guy who's trying to go on a certain day when it's not open. But so let's make sure we got that clear. When does it open? That's what just, days is it? Yeah, that's it's just me. I mean, oh, I, we're not open that day. Yeah. So what days is it open and uh, the times and how do we get our tickets? So um, legendsofhorror.ca or castleloma.ca. You can get your tickets from there. Um, we open, So the show starts on October 3rd. And uh, from October 3rd uh, to October 17th, we have slightly different pricing, lower pricing, $45 online, 50 on site. Um, from October 18th to November 3rd, $55 online, $60 on site. The regular standard hours are 7 p.m. until late. We say late because we just try to manage the groups and stagger everybody through so we're not cramming people in. Obviously, there's a VIP experience as well. Uh, that will allow people sort of entry with a, a line bypass, food and beverage vouchers for two drinks, food items, and a gift bag, which is cool. And so, uh, and then the family hours start up October 18th and run to November 2nd. Their price point, again, is a little bit different, $45 online, 50 on site, and that stays, um, it stays the same for the for the duration of the program. So, so those are the dates. Uh, yes, in the first uh, couple of weeks, it's not seven days a week. Uh, I think after the 17th, we moved to a full, full, full schedule, but we're aware that in the first uh, week or two of October, uh, people are still recovering from the summer and getting into their uh, school routines and their work routines and maybe not available to come every day of the week. So it really starts, uh, but October 3rd, our kickoff night, oh, I would invite people to come on our opening night because I think it's going to be a spectacular show and they're going to really love it. And we have the cold weather captains uh, on our opening night playing in uh, the Captain Morgan bar. So that's going to be fantastic as well. And just uh, just so people know, don't wear, they don't wear costumes. You guys have the costumes. We don't wear the costumes, right? Yes, you don't wear the costumes. Or in particular, you can wear a costume, but don't wear a mask. No right. mask. You'll be asked to take them off again. That's also because 
We don't want to uh, raise or lower people's expectations around who's doing jump scares and who isn't. If you're in a mask, you might be mistaken for staff and asked to do something uh, just for liability reasons being really understanding of the fact that it's it's dark out there and it's meant to be dark. You're navigating the woods because the bottom half of the gardens, as you know, is fully forested. So lighting is is very low. So we don't want you, we don't want people wearing masks because we don't want them compromising their vision. We don't want them being mistaken for staff. We don't want them being accosted by other terrified, um, other terrified guests who are going through the experience. So um, if you want to wear something and you want to leave your mask at home and leave anything resembling a weapon at home as well, because you'll be asked to leave it at the door. Fantastic. Last question. Is is my buddy going to be there? Of course he's going to be there. We're waiting for you. <laughs> I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm always amazed at how you folks switch from the garden concerts that you do in the summertime to like that switch right into this which is amazing thank everybody over there uh at um castle loma you guys do a great job and cannot wait to be once again scared it okay. looks like it's going to be amazing absolutely look forward to seeing you there and and uh and chasing you through the gardens <laughs> <laughs>